But moving on to the next item on the agenda, speaking about it, you will see that we have a very interesting discussion on architecture and design. Because, of course, great hospitality is about great design. The hotel needs to be designed in a very beautiful way. So how do you go about designing a beautiful hotel that really appeals to your guests and captures their attention? How do you create a desi design a hotel that has that wow effect from an architect architectural standpoint? Those are some important questions that we're going to be answering in the next 45 minutes to one hour via this panel discussion. And I'd first like to invite our moderator, Dr. David James Lessard, who is the Director of Architecture at Perkins & Will, to come and be the moderator of this interesting panel discussion. Mr. David James Lessard. Please do so. We also have Ms. Rebecca Hong, who is the Front Office Manager of the Grand Hyatt Hotel. The hotel where we are right now, of course. As you can see, this is a beautiful hotel, so we're going to know from Rebecca what they have done to create an exceptional guest experience. We also have Mr. Justin Wells, who is the head of Lifestyle Interiors at Woods Backup. <laughs> Justin is a very well-known architect, traveled all over the world, done some amazing projects, and he's got, if there's one person with some solid experience, it is Justin. And we also have Mr. Fadi Kabaloi, who is the CEO and Managing Director of Saria Contracting Company. So, Mr. David, this panel discussion is all about creating a fantastic guest experience, and we all want to know how to do that through a design perspective. So the stage is all yours. Take it away. Thank you very much. Good, that actually works. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, for joining uh, today. Um, my esteemed colleagues uh, on this panel uh, all share a passion for design in, in one shape or form. And I think uh, the varied backgrounds uh, on this very panel represent uh, a lot of uh, interest, which at some times are uh, competing and at some times are, are complementary. I think when it comes to design, myself as, as an architect, you, you always grapple with this notion of the subjectivity of design and, and where is design valued and where is it relevant uh, and where is it um, doing uh, something bigger than just becoming an image uh, to paste on a wall but instead uh, something more impactful on society and emotions and I think when it comes to uh, hotels specifically uh, a lot of what we do uh, are speaking to uh, emotions, whether it be uh, ourselves involved in the process of design, uh, but, but more importantly, uh, the guest. And, and curating this guest experience um, comes from uh, both architecture and design and interiors to hotel operations uh, and, and down to contracting. So a few of the questions uh, and issues I'd like to raise here today, uh, some may seem obvious, but others may seem uh, a little bit uh, off the cuff, outside the box, and, and perhaps even, even innovative. Um, and if I started sort of sequentially um, with uh, the discussion today, uh, arguably the design starts uh, from, from an idea, from a, from a brief, uh, from the proverbial uh, napkin sketch. Uh, and I think there are a lot of uh, factors that influence uh, how you begin uh, this process and how you begin to approach uh, a design problem. So, uh, Justin, I'd like to, to start with you. And uh, hotels uh, are not uh, one typology, but hotels have many different typologies, many different star ratings, many uh, different uh, positioning sort of goals. Uh, so how do you uh, yourself and, and at Woods Baggett approach um, uh, hotels uh, from a kind of unique and bespoke perspective? Okay, <clears throat> that's a very big question. Okay, so um, first, good morning, everybody. Um, so Woods, Baggett's, uh, Woods Baggett's approach to um, each hotel design has to be unique. At uh, end of the day, the, the, there is an intrinsic value to engage with a company like ourselves and, 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 and other consultants um, in the market as well, that we are looking to try and create something that is different, that is unique, that is authentic. Um, so it starts with a desire to be different. Now, um, I guess the approach is, okay, what's the offering? Are we talking about a five-star luxury brand, you know, you know in, in the Maldives or in the Seychelles or wherever it may be in some luxurious location in the world? 
or is it um, an interesting little urban hotel? You know, it's something you can imagine in Soho in New York, lovely little urban uh, kind of footprint in a, in a very diverse sort of urban fabric as well. It depends on what we are trying to achieve as to how we start the process of um, the design. So research is our biggest cue. What we get the most and what our clients pay um, us for the most uh, value, intrinsic value, is our research. What can we find out about a site, a location, an opportunity that we can unlock in a design process that we can then explore and then start to bring a lot of storytelling around that and really it starts with research. Without doing that, you know, we would just be applying a number, a process or a system to design um, and it's not what, we, what we're about. And I think what's most interesting is um, the, the designers in the market um, were, were, were asked very rigorously to almost look, with, look inwardly uh, about an approach of every hotel uniquely and to respond with something which is uh, captivating. It is something which is fresh in the market, but also something which has um, potential brand, brand equity. There'll be some longevity um, so it's not just a, a fad or a fashion, that's something which is going to stand the test of time. And in this part of the world, specifically the Middle East, we need to be culturally respective of our clientele. We have a very diverse group um, and, a, and a, I guess a climate of different types of uh, users. So to be respectful of who is going to use and engage the space, um, and there's, there's a multitude of different factors there. I think it starts with research and obviously uh, of telling a very compelling story. Mm. Yeah, I think um, I would tend to agree. I mean, as an architect myself, you know, the, the paying for our, our ideas more than paying for drawings is something we'd like to, to value more and think uh, clients should certainly uh, value, value more. Um, but we're also uh, kind of stereotyped uh, at times for uh, being maybe a little bit too out there, a little bit too conceptual, a little bit too uh, heavy on the, on the story side, and maybe uh, not as sensitive to some of the pragmatics uh, around hotels. And I think you know, the argument uh, developing probably amongst the panel today is that uh, good design is something holistic that touches uh, the image, the operations, and, and the contracting. So um, I wanted to segue into, into Rebecca to sort of complement um, this, the, this sort of story and conceptualization of an idea uh, and dig a little bit into to the operations. Uh, operations sometimes uh, doesn't have as much glory uh, as the image uh, in terms of design, um, but I think we would all agree as people in the industry that uh, that operation and that experience and that offering that the hotel can provide uh, sort of complements and ties into uh, that design and having an impact on, on the guest experience. So, um, you know, how do you uh, leverage uh, design um, in your properties, uh, for example, and, and do des does design uh, sort of uh, impact or, or change the way you approach uh, the, the operational aspects, for good or for bad? We all know that uh, good designs can be challenging to operate and vice versa. So uh, we're always very curious in the input from the hotel side. Well, when it comes to hotel operations, we receive the property when we are in a pre-opening stage, and then we work along the line to make sure that this is meeting our brand standards and what is important for our guests. So basically what is, I do believe that design itself is important factor for guest satisfaction at the end of the day due to the fact that now in Middle East there are a lot of hotels, a lot of different uh, types of the hotel. And for us, for the hotel operation, it's all about meeting the guest's you know, expectation uh, or sort of say satisfaction. So when you have a lot of you know, hotels available, which hotel would you choose based on the uh, service, of course, based on you know, whether they are meeting your expectations, location matters, as well as, you know, some hotels are very much budget hotel, whether it also depends on the purpose of the visit. If it is a business traveler, we'll definitely choose the hotel based on the location, based on what they provide. Also, budget will be very much important. But if you're thinking about the leisure perspective, then I do believe that the property itself, how it looks like, how comfortable it is designed, so they can spend longer period of time in the hotel without any problem will definitely matter. 
Yes. I think it's, it's refreshing to hear that design does in fact matter because I think there's a pretense to this entire discussion that suggests that design does have quite, a, quite an impact on the guest experience. Um, and, and we like to take that as a truism, although we like to challenge ourselves at times as to you know, how relevant is, is the input the, that, that we're having. Um, so you know, once you have this idea formulated in this partnership between uh, a client, a designer, uh, and an operator, um, you're then left with uh, piles and piles of documents and, and lots and lots of papers that eventually go out to markets and need to be executed. And uh, you know, I would be the first one to say as an architect that um, execution uh, is uh, one of the most essential uh, components uh, of, of a design. Uh, design can, can live in a visualization, but in the end, uh, it needs to be tangible, usable, um, and, and executed to, to the highest of, of standards. So, uh, Fatty, from the contracting uh, perspective, and you know, on receipt of these of these documents, um, you know, what do you then do? Uh, and in hotels specifically, maybe a little bit differently than you would normally do in, in other projects. Do you challenge it a little bit more? Do you bring in some of your knowledge and expertise from maybe previous um, projects to try to fill uh, fill some some gaps? Uh, or do you simply say, business as usual, leave me alone, and I'll I'll go ahead and build it? No, hotels actually we consider as contractors. Hotels at the same caliber of hospitals. It's a very complex entity, and uh, every room becomes a project by itself. So we put incredible amount of planning and uh, incredible amount of resources and expertise in it. Uh, we have gained a lot of experience with building hotels, and we find out that uh, the, it's always uh, evolving. Uh, it's it's a fluid type of a construction because. Uh, as we start executing, we actually put you all back together into, <laughs> and try to bring you back together as much as possible into the coordination and understanding what changed or the inquiries that uh, takes this uh, hotel experience into reality, specifically conducting mock-ups that uh, brings back the architect, the designer, the operator into a live scene of what he has drawn and uh, can criticize uh, the, 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 the drawing board again and the details and reformat it to a point where uh, it can really uh, re uh, reflect what has been designed. Uh, as contractors, we'd like to be more involved at the earlier stage, not us as a contractor, but I do advise the, the design industry of the hotelier to, 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 to bring in the constructability element and the experience of the contractor because the contractor really through the execution, he he's exposed to the suppliers and the vendors and there's a lot of uh, new technology it comes in uh, as we are uh, executing and we can share that with you and bring it into hopefully a more productive, fruitful product. Mm. So you touched a little bit on uh, you know, when you come in and, and when you eventually uh, say people should, should reconvene. I, I think uh, design is very much about a, a process. And um, being this process-driven uh, approach, there are many different ways uh, to approach it, other sort of conceptually or contractually. But uh, you know, does the panel feel as though um, you know, we have the process right in terms of uh, when stakeholders are engaged, uh, when those critical inputs uh, are, are coming in? And, and, and I use this as a reference for, for not only in the past, but uh, maybe how that's shifting uh, currently and, and how we would like to see that working um, in, the, in the future. Uh, I'll leave it open to whoever wants to jump in on, uh, on that one first. I, think I, I mean, I'm very interested in this. this it, it, we're, everyone in this room is in, in some way part of the hospitality sector. This is what this event's about. But, you know, in different sectors specifically, like healthcare, you mentioned it, Fadi. Um, you know, there's usually government entities involved, there's lots of big funding around it, there's lots of big, you know, strategic planning around, you know, uh, hospitals and strategic locations, etc. There's a lot of organisation and structure to that sector. Now, back to hospitality, what's most interesting about this sector? It is very organic, it's, it's a very live and dynamic um, sector because, you know, sometimes the operator may not be uh, on board until very late in the process. We've got, um, we have clients who, who don't even know why they want to do a hotel, but they just want to do a hotel. You know, the, 
there's got, they've got no uh, feasibility um, uh, information that really supports a hotel you know, early on, but obviously we, we encourage them to seek that information out. Um, and then they don't even know what sort of positioning. Do they want a five star? Do they want a four star? Are we looking for an interesting kind of bespoke white label brand, white uh, lifestyle brand, whatever it is? So when, we, when we're at the table and we're getting engaged with the client very early on, we often don't know what the, the, the procurement methodology might be for the contractor. It could be a competitive tender. It could be a negotiated uh, contract with a, with, a, with a nominated contractor. We don't even know if the mains contractor would be also the fit-out contractor. There's many things we don't know. Then conversely on the operational side, we don't know who the operator might be. Um, we encourage that obviously um, as much as we can. Um, but in, in the event that we don't know, obviously we, we, we flag to our client that you know the, there's always a brand standard, there's a guideline that we need to adhere to and when we are bringing all the consultant team together, we need to be working towards a common goal. So in short, if we can't get a lot of this information early on, we, we, we ring a bit of an alarm bell. In the event that we do have pretty good alignment and the operator is, in, you know, is on board early on, we, we really want to drive home strong engagement from a design point of view with the consultant team and with the operator because we do need to be working towards a common goal and certainly a program of construction as well. Um, if we're working towards a common goal, two things happen. We really do um, get a creative process in a very linear direction. Then we can, we can create an outcome which is, would be better than an ad hoc reactionary process. Um, and secondly, it gives us more time to invest in the creative outcome rather than the coordination process or the, you know, doing abortive work and then redoing it again in a very hostile program. At least it allows us all collectively to work towards a creative goal, come up with a really wonderful design solution. Unfortunately, hospitality, it's not always the case. It is, it is a diverse sector and I think we all need to be agile in some capacity in this sector. Mm. Yes, uh, agility is a, is, a, is a key term there, and, and you mentioned that uh, there is a, very much a structure and a process in place uh, when it comes to uh, creating hotels, and I guess, you know, in the age of the uh, on-demand customer expecting everything uh, when they want it, um, how technology has facilitated uh, this behavior, particularly of millennials, um, there is a, a need or, 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 or an requirements to be more responsive, uh, not only on the design side and being a little bit more specific, but maybe even on the operation side. Now, um, to keep it kind of relevant and to take it back to, to the hotel side, um, you know, the typical refurbishment cycle is on seven years and maybe something harder in, in 12 years. Um, but are we finding now that that has to be even accelerated because the competition is increasing, uh, the taste uh, has gone from uh, opulence to minimalism, you know, all of a sudden in a day in your customer base, uh, what they liked yesterday Today, they, they don't like today. Uh, so are our hotel designs uh, flexible enough to allow the hotel to um, keep up with the times, if you will? When it comes to hotel, we need to, we have certain, you know, brand standards and the image that what we want to provide. For example, Grand Hyatt, where you are at the moment, we have the image of being grand. It's massive, it's big. We have the biggest ballroom, second biggest ballroom in the, uh, in the, in the city. And if you look at how the building is built, it's quite huge. So this is something that what brand is delivering. So I have experienced um, of the pre-opening property, whereas as an operator, as a hotel, we receive the property was quite late end. So we were in a situation we had to really you know, compromise a lot of things from the brand perspective because this is already what is given to us. And we have a promised time of delivering to the uh, grand opening date. And there are, of course, a little bit of um, things or the interior itself, which is not really meeting what we are looking for. And then it comes with the refurbishment over the time, you know, after the opening, you will have to get some guest feedback in order to identify what would be the actual you know, problems or area for us to focus or rectify, and then, you know, moving forward, we change it. But what I think in Middle East is that we're rapidly growing so fast, and we commit to the timing, we have to commit to the timing, whereas, you know, the hotels are <coughs> contractors, in my opinion, you are, you know, you're around the clock, you need to deliver when it's promised. 
according to the consultant, for example. And then as an operator, when we jump in and we have to deliver with a given time of the opening. Mm. This is what I think. Yes. Uh, you mentioned there, you know, grand. The, yeah. the, the, the grand. the grand Hyatt uh, is, you know, the first thing that pops out is it is, in fact, that uh, large, uh, dare I say, on the level of, of, of opulence, uh, really, um, you know, no shortcomings when it comes to all of those luxury and amenities that you would expect. Um, this historically, I think, has been associated um, to a guest perception of, of quality. This is a high-end, high-specification, five-star. Uh, it must be then a uh, good design. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, you know, times are in fact uh, changing. Um, I think people now are perhaps, or guests specifically, a little bit more focused on, um, you know, uh, how they feel in a space, not because of the image, but uh, the ease of use, you know, usability, the sort of tactile quality uh, of uh, a room layout uh, or the materials. Uh, you know, and this is a sphere now where both on the contractor's side and especially the design side, uh, we're spending a lot and a lot of time now. I mean, the, I think the, uh, the biggest lead-in or the biggest element in a program now is the mock-up room approval um, in, in hotels. Um, but this, I think, is a testament to the type of thinking, you know, that goes into those. So, you know, gentlemen from the design and, and construction side, um, what, what are we thinking about nor, now uh, more than just simply the image uh, of, the, of the room? Okay, um, I might just jump in quickly, sure, Fadi. So, <clears throat> look, quite quickly, what, what's, what's, most re, um, what's most obvious at the moment in, in the global trend of hospitality is, um, you know, user experience is becoming such a, an amplification through social media. You know, I mean, every hotel um, in the world in some way is getting, um, you know, it's getting liked or, or it's getting criticised through social media channels, whatever it might be. So user experience is critical. I think the first thing is to be aware through design, someone's going to have an appreciation or a criticism of the design. Um, it's not specifically only design. It goes into operations and obviously the whole guest experience, which... You know, I'm sure Rachel, um, Rebecca, sorry, will will elaborate on. But through design, a couple of things happen. Um, quality of the design doesn't necessarily um, lend itself to only being five star luxury. I, I think there is a changing market, and 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 each of us, are, you know, we stay in in uh, you know nice accommodation from time to time, well, whether it be through work or travel. We have we have our own opinions about what is good design. So when we are coming up with um, a design solution, it doesn't necessarily mean grand or opulence, although you know, the five star and the luxury and the upper upper scale set is in that space. But if we are coming up with good design, we, we throw good design through every level of hotel offering, from a budget hotel to an unbranded hotel to something that could be a, a, a historic, or adaptive reuse hotel. One of my favorite hotels in the world is in is in Shanghai and it's um, in South Bund. It's a it's a conversion from an old. Uh, it's called the Waterhouse. It's an old Waterhouse building converted into a hotel. Now it's a minimalist design, but you can see the level of care and articulation in the way materials have come together. Simple materials, honest materials, concrete, glass, you know, and and timber. But the details there, and everyone who goes into the building can appreciate there's been a lot of care and thought about that. So design doesn't necessarily mean Big chandeliers, giant, you know, opulent spaces. It actually does cross across many different things, and I don't necessarily think um, that's going to change in the future. So when we come into any project, we do consider right. Well, no matter what the offering might be, where the location might be, and who the user group might be, attention to detail, and a way we call it sort of a simplified, refined simplification. We are talking about just keeping things simple user interface of how to put switches on and off in the rooms, particularly, you know, how do I turn things on and off because some rooms have 20 different options and I just want to turn my lights off at night in the room. <laughs> Keep it simple, but at least there's an articulation and thought about how that person's going to use it. And, and we've considered that outcome and we do that from a design point of view. We sort of, we, we have to collaborate operationally with that outcome as well and obviously be mindful about, you know, how that's going to be executed on a practicality sense as well. Mm -hmm. We actually, contractors, love mock-ups of, uh, of hotels because that's where we can uh, put everything together, criticize our own construction, criticize the details of the uh, uh, discrepancies, wherever the discrepancies is, and also bring in both employer, uh, consultant, 
operator and interior designer together to look at the final details. And we also don't like changes. We don't like untimely changes. So that once it's approved, we consider it as the Bible for construction for us and them. And if we have any particular uh, uh, either value engineering or bringing in elements of certain uh, uh, IT or developers that are at that time more, uh, uh, more, more practical to use, that's where we can put it in for, uh, to demonstrate how it goes in with the concept of both operators and here designer and designer. So I do encourage any hotelier to really, uh, from the particular part of the construction, is to emphasize on uh, a lot of effort and the details into the mock-ups. Mm. I think um, you know, as I as I mentioned earlier, you know, there there might be some some competing interest, you know, on the paddle um, in terms of uh, what are in fact those uh, priorities uh, in coming to define uh, the guest experience. I mean, what we're saying here today is uh, design operations and sort of uh, execution uh, is absolutely essential. But what we're trying to to say here today is is how design growth from a process and then is translated really impacts this. Now, we can't have everything. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the process of design, contracting, and operations is in fact about uh, compromise. Uh, now, the priorities, uh, whether it be simply design or contracting, and even within design, contracting, and operations, you know, are we changing uh, our priorities in terms of what is absolutely essential um, to, to be uh, within a project to enhance that guest experience? Um, you know, are we doing things a little bit differently um, here, here today, and how can we go into the future? I'm sure operationally there are things that are absolutely written in stone, but things are becoming maybe more and more flexible on, and same in design and same in, in contracting. So I'd like to hear the panel's thoughts on um, how your priorities have changed. David, you could have the best design, the best coordinated design. If you don't have the right contractor to build it right, you do not have that image reflected correctly. So we also believe we are as important into the design stage and the design process and the final product. Uh, I think we don't get that much credit as because you believe in the design is, but again, uh, you can have the best design if you don't have the right contractor to reflect and build it correctly and do and, 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 and coordinate the discrepancies and the errors because, as you know, <laughs> there's no design called perfect and there's nothing that's perfect. Um, from, <clears throat> I think from design point of view, it's actually quite symbolic that I'm sitting in the middle of these two um, wonderful colleagues here because we do pivot between the two. I mean, when we, when we think about creating a compelling story and, you know, coming up with <clears throat> something which is unique for the offering and is, is very relevant to place or context, um, there's a couple of things we consider. Obviously, we need to work in with our operator. We need to understand the functionality of how this space is really going to work. We're not talking about just guest rooms here, but we'll into that public detail in a second. But we, you know, how the public spaces work, how will people move through re relevant to their brand? And they know their customers better than we know their customers. So, you know, in that, in that investigation, we need to ask a lot of very leading questions and obviously trying to get um, the right in information. That's our, one of our responsibilities and that's what's changed, um, David, in, over the last couple of, you know, say 10 years or so. But it, then the execution of that, we need to understand what the materiality selection might be, what the jointing detail might be, you know, how's it going to be abused? Will it be robust? Will it hold up to, you know, the kind of use that it's going to go through? So from a contracting and a kind of a, an execution um, methodology, we need to be aware that that's going to be a suitable choice of materials. And obviously, you know, if we need to collaborate with a contractor about a substitution, because we're open-minded about it. So we, we tend to swing between the two. We have to, because we're a partnership in a, in a, in a, in a bigger process. And there's a whole series of other consultants uh, that, that you know, are hand in glove with us as well as architects and interior designers. So you know, I think a, a lot of that is about partnering with um, information and the IP that you know, we don't have that we must get from our, from our colleagues. I mean, that's one way I'd say we are changing as an industry. Mm -hmm. I just tell you, I'd, I'd like to put one simple example. Uh, without mentioning names, we've had like a hotel that was well designed, supposedly, but in, uh, in this region, we don't have the uh, uh, municipality codes to enforce certain things that are very important, such as parking. 
I mean, a hotel, uh, every room in the, in the United States, you must have one and a half size parking for it. So if you have 200 rooms, you must have that much parking. Uh, we literally had this hotel designed with 20 parkings. And we, you know, the, the idea of how to bring parking back again into the equation took a lot of effort, a lot of time. So a simple thing like this should be integrated by going, the, the owner and the employer or the developer really come to specialty people on the design before the stage of going into the, the bidding to, in, to include things that maybe the municipality cannot impose on you, but literally you must need and you need to have. Well, absolutely. I mean, d design uh, starts really before pen goes to paper. I mean, it really starts with, you know, where is this going to be and what standards are we working to and, you know, who the operator uh, will ultimately really, uh, be in positioning and it kind of starts with the booking experience. You know, there is an element of design that goes into that and in the managing of the guest expectation, as you, as you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, from, from the outset. And I think, um, you know, we don't only talk about, and again, I reiterate, you know, the, the image that we all see, but it's about uh, the process of booking, arrival, ease of accessibility, is there enough parking, uh, is the valet queue uh, too big or too small, you know, it was my check-in experience uh, fluid. Um, and that's why, you know, and it goes on and on and on and on, all the way down to the, the checkout process, and that's why uh, the order of magnitude and priorities, uh, you know, would you compromise to wait a half an hour for your room, for your car, um, if your guest room finishes are absolutely fantastic. So I think from a guest feedback perspective, you know, what are those things that, um, Yes, simply, uh, you know, always raise as this thing is a non-starter for me, and and I will never come here again uh, simply because of this thing. And is it that simple? I think design, the word of design, what they are talking about, and what I see is slightly different here because design for me, when it comes to having a great experience in the hotel, varies by everybody else. All of you must be staying in this hotel over a night or two, that's for sure. And um, depend, you know, what makes the best hotel? It's not only about customer service. It's not only about the check-in experience. It's not only about housekeeping service. It's it's about everything. It's a talk, speaking of a parking lot. It's more to a functionality. You know, it is important to have some, you know, areas in the hotel which is perfectly functioning, which is easier for everybody else. Yes, it does matter. But this is something that we can also change and amend and rectify over the time of the year after the hotel opens. So what I see of you know, best hotel, yes, it is about the service. Yes, it is about uh, reputation as well. But at the same time, for example, if you go to New York, for example, and if you stayed in certain hotel, and you, would you remember New York with the hotel you stayed in? Or would you remember the city um, based on the places you visit. For example, I personally, um, I have my favorite hotel in Paris, and when I recall Paris, I only remember this hotel. It was not, it was not only about the service that I, what I got, that was absolutely amazing, but the first impression, design for me as a hotelier, for me it's more to, yes, functionality, but more to a first impression. Mm. So, you remember the hotel of how it looks like in Dubai, for example. There are a lot of land, you know, hotels being a landscape, right? Uh, landscape, sorry, landmark, sorry, <laughs> landmark of the area. And people remember the hotel, although you have never been there, although probably you just heard it from social media, so you heard the review, and then just you rate your hotel without staying there as one of those top hotels. So yeah. design what I see related to the guest experience is more to a first impression along with the whole operation factor, how you have been treated and how well you have been treated and would you ever come back to the hotel or not. Yeah, that's, why, that's, why, that's why when uh, we, each of us go somewhere, that other, where did you stay? It's not what, where did you go, where did you stay the first day? Yeah, right? It's true, where did you stay? It's, uh, it's very important. I mean, would you stay in, if the hotel does a function of providing a bed and a breakfast, it's not really a hotel, and we are not here as a hotelier, who's, uh, we're all professional in our area, looking after the guests and making sure that they come back. We do have a social media being, you know, playing the major role of um, identifying which hotel is doing better than the others. 
And of course, that social media itself is important for everybody else, all of you, to choose what hotel that you will be staying in. Mm -hmm. I think we, you know, we're touching on, uh, on what I feel is a, is a transformational uh, element of design and the guest experience, and, and it is, in fact, the importance of place. Um, I think, uh, you know, historically, with the emergence of hotel chains and hotel brands, um, we were starting to fall victim of a homogenization of design. Uh, that uh, a hotel in Doha would look the same as a hotel in New York versus the same as a hotel um, in London. And I think it's a, it is a pretty wide consensus now that um, to be a little bit more uh, tailored uh, to the place and to uh, take a design approach that is a little more sensitive to, to the environment is certainly a trend that we're seeing uh, emerging. Now there might be certain hotel brands, and I'm not sure whether, whether Hyatt is one of them, that tries to retain that, that ethos. I know uh, one other large uh, hotel operator, which I won't name specifically, but they actually pride themselves on the familiarity uh, of their room, that when you go here to here to here, uh, you feel at home. So this notion of at home uh, is coming into uh, the sphere of discussion on design. So, um, you know, where, where, where are we on what side of this pendulum now? You know, are we trying to create this at home experience or are we, you know, always trying to be unique and bespoke uh, and differentiated and more importantly, um, specific to, to place? Um, look, I might grab that because I think what's, what we're seeing is, I mean, there's, there is, there is